Aries friends and welcome to your horoscope for August of 2020 where this month we are actually called to look at our eccentricities. What makes us unique? We've got Aquarian and Leo energies dominating this month. It's absolutely beautiful. So if you've been feeling a little bit like you want to be out of your shell, you want to speak a little bit bigger, maybe you want to do things a little bit more in a different fashion, this is definitely the month where I think you get a little bit of help seeing exactly how to do that without going going to that Aries impatient energy that having Mars in your sign for such a long time can create. There's really a very productive way through this month and I actually think it's a really good beautiful month nonetheless. All right, before we get into that, a little bit of housekeeping here. First of all, in August, man, the eat and greets, not only do they continue, but we've got some beautiful guests coming through. Glenn Mitchell will be here, Kathy Rose, Kay Taylor, Susan Miller will be here as well, and Laura Nelbandian. And if you know anything about Norwalk, then you know Nor you know Laura Nelbandian. This is going to be a really phenomenal month. Lots to talk about, lots of learning. I would love to hear also who you'd like to come this direction. I've gotten a couple suggestions, so if you have more, put them in the comment section down below. Not to mention this month, the 7th through the 9th, I'll be a part of a free summit, the Astrology of Power and Purpose. Sign up for it. It's free. Come over. Listen to 18 different astrologers talk about how you can use astrology to empower your life, your world, maybe learn a little something. Plus, did I say that it's free? Because it is. <laughs> so you can get signed up in the description box down below, and I look forward to seeing you over there, okay? All right, Aries, let's jump in and talk about what's going down this month. So right as we come into the month on the third, we're coming into a full moon happening in the energy of Aquarius. Now this is going to light up your 11th house. The 11th house is friends, social groupings, long range plans, goals, even where we see you on social media. It's a very public social place, causes, organizations, all of that falls right here. Now the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. And what that full moon does is it sheds so much light on something. It's like, you know, if you walk into a room and it's kind of dim, but then you flip on a switch and that big old light comes on, that's what a full moon is doing for you. It's giving you a lot of ability to see what's going on because it's trying to bring something to its next stage. Likely what's been happening here in the 11th house for you is you've been working on something and now it's time to get ready to give it away so that other people can eat as well. It's time to harvest and give it away. So with this full moon happening in the 11th house, one of the things that may happen is you could have surprises, right? Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, our planet of surprise, of do it different, a little bit eccentric, erratic, but genius all at the same time. So in this area, this full moon could bring surprises about friendships coming to your table, surprises in a social sphere, right? And surprise is not a positive or a negative word. It's all going to depend on how you react to it. But it is certainly going to give us an indicator that there is a shift coming in this area of your life. For some of you, this could just be that you get completely different ideas about groupings that you'd like to align with, or maybe some groupings that you are aligned with have a little something go on, and you have to decide if that's still the appropriate alignment for you. So it'll definitely be a powerful full moon as they are, but you'll see those impacts over the next four weeks. Now, when we get to the fourth, your ruling planet Mars is actually gonna come into a square with Jupiter who's over in Capricorn. I tell you about this square because I think that a square is a brilliant opportunity to take some action. So one of the things that this gives me the idea that it's going to be happening for you is maybe in your career life, something in what we know you for, where we see your reputation, you're having to speak up. You're having to take some action here, maybe be a little bit more assertive. Again, remember, be assertive, fight the fight that you need to push forward about what you're passionate about. Are you working on a project and you're passionate about it? And today on the fourth takes a little bit more push from you. Use it. Use that energy to expand yourself. Just make sure you don't burn yourself out either, okay? On the fifth, we see Mercury moving into the energy of Leo, a fellow fire energy. So lighting up your fifth house space. Now this is comfortable. It's fellow fire energy. But Mercury here in the fifth house, one of the things it tells me is that you're busy making decisions or having conversation. There's a lot of communication and expression that is coming out. In Leo, Leo is like, I want to express myself. So again, you've got this sense and this feel this month about what makes you you. 
You could also be doing talking, conversation, Mercury's an energy of travel with children or things around your children, something that gives you passion, something that is joyful, like joyful, like children. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if there aren't some back to school shopping conversations that are going on, depending on what that looks like in your world, okay? On the seventh, we see Venus moving into the energy of Cancer, lighting up your fourth house space, home, family, real estate, property, and Venus loves to beautify. So as Venus comes around to this fourth house space, you may find yourself feeling like, I wanna beautify my home. And maybe it's not even in the sense of I want to beautify where it can be seen externally. Is it time to take care of plumbing? Venus is an energy of finance as well. Are you having to put some kind of financial investment into your home space, into your family, into the units that maybe you consider to be your family? You had a, um, a moon that happened in the 11th house. So is there a close friendship or a close organization or connection? And now somebody from that really needs your attention. And that's like home, your tribe, your family. You could definitely see Venus, Venus bringing a fair amount of health and beauty and harmony to this particular area. Now on the 15th, Uranus is going to take that retrograde. Now, whenever a planet goes retrograde, it's asking us to look back, to re. Uranus retrograde here in the energy of Taurus lights up your second house. So again, a house of finance, right? So perhaps what you're looking back at with Uranus here very specifically is, what do you need to do to be financially free? Do you have financial freedom? Do you need to do something genius, something innovative with your money? But it will require you to go back over what you've already got and then look at where you want to go so that you can take it there. Another thing about the second house that I feel like has been so big for Aries over the last couple years is really this redefining of your identity. And now you're on a stepping back into the second house says, where's your self-esteem? What do you need to let go of Aries to be free? You don't have to be who you were when you were 18. You don't have to be who you were six months ago. You can really grow and shed and let go of the things that are not allowing your freedom, that are not allowing you to be brilliant and different and maybe off the cuff a little bit from who you've been around or what you've been known for. So this Uranus retrograde is going to be absolutely a beautiful time for you to look back until January of 2021 at what you're willing to release and surprisingly sometimes let go for your own freedom. On the 19th, we've got a new moon happening in the energy of Leo. Beautiful. So lighting up the fifth house. The sun is in its joy over here in the fifth house. It's like, yes, I'm home. I'm in Leo. I feel real good. So in this fifth house area for you, you could find yourself having um, a lot of self-confidence, being actually just very motivated, being very magnetic. You want to be seen. You want motion. You want movement to be happening here because the sun is bringing light, heat, light and vitality. Again, this could be about joy, generosity, pleasure. Your children could definitely be a consideration of things that are beginning to happen at the 19th right here. Now on the 20th, we're going to see Mercury move into the energy of Virgo. So moving on from that very big speaking Leo voice, and now we're moving into the energy of Virgo. So it's going to light up this sixth house space for you. Daily routines, health, your schedule, how you're of service to other people, high integrity. That's what lives in the sixth house. So now as Mercury moves here, Mercury's quite comfortable as a natural ruler of the sixth house. So here, you have the opportunity to imply, to apply your critical thinking, your um, analytical skills here, to settle into and look over, does your daily routine, does your health and the routine that you have around your health, is this solid for you, right? Details, get into the details of things. This is not a superficial placement for you. This is not high level. This is in the depths, in the details of what's going on because you want this area to be of the most integrity, the best that it can be, right? This is also a beautiful energy for job seekers. If you are looking for work, if you do something freelance, this energy is brilliant for being found, for putting your resumes out there, for being tapped into the details of what companies need and being able to bring that back. So if you do freelance work of any variety, I think that this is beautiful. Oh, I'm not sure who you are, but if you are writing or working on a book or an illustration, this is the time where your energy will be 
um, the most profound and you can tap into that. So if that's you, please let me know in the comment section down below. Now, as we end this month, the sun is moving on. It's time to get out of Leo season. I know that's sad for the Leos, but for you, it's going to be moving into the energy of Virgo into your sixth house. So again, now we've just had Mercury come in here. Now the sun is in here. So light, heat, life, and vitality meets mercury energy meets detail meets critical thinking meets conversation so don't be surprised if you're having a lot of conversation making decisions and getting into the details of your daily routine but also the sun in the energy of virgo here really gives you 30 days to get organized or get reorganized as need be but get organized because we're getting ready to journey towards our next season so you want to make sure you have all your little ducks in a row okay all right, Aries, I think it's going to be a good month. I think there's a month of a lot of voice for you. I, I can't, I just have this sense. It's like, Aries, you've got a big voice this month. Just make sure you don't move towards the area of impatience and kind of burn down any bridges that you don't need to, but speak up for who you are. I would love to see who you're becoming. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the eat and greets. Come join me at the summit for power and purpose, if I can get it out of my mouth. I would love to see you guys over there, okay? I'll see you next month. Bye, everyone.